the difference to print is that on the web we have interactivity and we all need to connect this with a navigation sort of an interface back in the days this is uh, from the paris metro it's a pretty old ticket machine where you roll up and down on the selections or there would be different kind of handles and with the computer we had to sort of take that physical machine and put it into an interface that we can use uh, digital, but we kind of rebuild it like a machine that we press in real life. Over the years, we established uh, certain conventions that we use in this GUI, they call the graphical user interface. Most commonly, you would have a big red button that call to action, the CTA. It has round corners to make it physically look like a button, might even have some kind of 3D effect to it. When you see check marks, that means you can select several things at once, not just one. When you have radio buttons, you can click them on or off. It's nice to have these um, radio buttons in cards because they're easier to read than a long list of stuff. So I think that the layer on the right is just more comfortable to look at. When you have toggle buttons, there's a danger that you might not know which state is the toggle on and off. So you have to make that very clear. The red and green can work, but if you're colorblind, you wouldn't work for that. So you can have some kind of 3D effect as if, well, as if it was pressed in or out. You just, you just need to be very obvious, maybe even use the words for it. Quite often, it's the last step of completing a transaction on the web is an input field where you have to type in things. And that, that's where it gets confusing for people a lot of times because you don't know what to input unless you have very clear labels. And once you click in that field, make sure that that label that you had in, in, in that is still somewhere visible because you might, once you click in the field, it might disappear of your um, default text and then you don't know what you were supposed to fill in there. And if you have a lot of input fields, it makes sense to kind of group them in groups and make them short and descriptive. Like Amazon on the left, very long time ago, very difficult to fill this in. Uh, evolved to the one on the right, looks much cleaner, much easier to understand. And if you have a lot of um, categories, you might want to condense them into drop down menu. Lately, we have a lot of these fat footers. I think I mentioned that before, that you can stuff a whole bunch of links into the bottom of the page. Okay, one last thing. If you have alerts, they're usually in situations that people don't really like. So you need to write that micro copy in a very good tone, and that's up to a web designer mostly as well.